Um, I am hoping that my talk today will, will help to lead the benefits for all my fellow citizens. I've thought a, a lot about these things. I've been involved with municipal government both over in Scotland and in, uh, and in Canada and uh, various things. So I think we can start any time you like. Um, this is my, idea, my ideal for St. Albert. How long it takes, I don't know, is net zero triple bottom line. And what that means is that all waste goes to feedstock. Uh, best use for our present assets and start now while money is cheap and we need the employment opportunities. Glasgow's cleansing department began with picking up horse droppings and progressed through separation of metals and rags to the production of electricity used to power its garbage trucks. There's one from the 20s. Uh, net zero operation with no need for a landfill. Glasgow Transport Department, which I worked for in my early days, Throughout its history, operated at a profit which paid for museums and libraries and concert halls. Following postponed maintenance uh, during World War II and not having the reserve funds that contributed to its demise in the 60s. In 1974, I became part of the team that introduced European LRT to North America. Edmonton built this pioneer line on budget and in the space of four years, for the 1978 Commonwealth Games. During the startup phase, we had visits from many American cities, with the result that LRT now covers the continent from Calgary to Houston and from Los Angeles to New Jersey. This is a reminder. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, this is a reminder of where we are today. Edmonton does not envisage the completion of its own lines until 2040 with no timeline for St. Albert. Even if we would be satisfied with the roundabout route they propose, most of us would be long dead and St. Albert just another suburb of Edmonton. Um, this is my concept here that uh, when the Ray Given Drive is completed as a bypass around St. Albert that the LRT would run on the trail and go directly uh, down the trail and to the, connect with the Edmonton system at Kingsway Mall. Um, most livable communities in the world combine walkability and cyclability with efficient public transit. The right of way of St. Albert Trail is wide enough for this even at its narrowest part. We cannot afford to lose direct connection to prime destinations. And that, that's um, what St. Albert Trail could become. The cost of LRT can be held to a minimum using shallow depth trap constru track construction and simple tensioning overhead. Transit-oriented development sites properly promoted and managed could neutralize the cost to the payer, taxpayer. We can build our own line while waiting for Edmonton to decide to join us. Whereas Edmonton stations are one-purpose architectural monuments, we should be taking advantage of the air rights to build community meeting places with local amenities, various types of accommodation topped with prestige re restaurants or businesses. Signature Station at St. Anne Street would be an architectural terminal feature for marking the entrance to downtown in the Perron district and representing a tangible center of excellence for our role as an innovative smart city. Both Edmonton and Calgary have pronounced the U2 type LRVs obsolete, but they really have many years of useful life remaining. They cost about $350,000 new, and the replacements today cost $2.5 million. To an operator, their value remains high, but on the market they will go for as little as $25,000 apiece. 
as an example, the city of Mendoza in Argentina has bought San Francisco, uh, San Diego's retirees for that price for their new system, and they didn't even have to change the paint scheme. We need local employment in these uncertain times, and the best way to use cheap money is to build infrastructure that not only contributes to our present and future health and well-being, but will provide an ongoing source of employment for our citizens. Achieving our net zero goal will see the adoption of the electric bus, and as London has proved over the years, a 30-foot double-decker requires the same power as one of our 52 seaters and has lots of room for batteries in the rear without obscuring the windows. In a proposal I made last year, I suggested the connection of Villeneuve Airport with the International Airport by LRT. With the development of an industrial area along Township Road 544, producing high-value commodities that could be shipped by air uh, using the LRT in containers, and uh, this would be a win-win situation for St Albert, Sturgeon County and Edmonton. This is not a very clear slide, but we were considering electric power for our buses and local delivery vehicles, a city-wide network to receive input from solar, wind and biogas installations would serve a, a network of charging points and would contribute to lower utility rates. A couple of European examples of LRT on grass track here. Ours could be similar or could be paved for occasional use by emergency vehicles or could run in the road right of way. Frankfurt in Germany was the original home of the U2 car and outside of the city centre sometimes runs among the trees. This could be the case on the trail once they grew up a bit. No matter what thoughts might be stirred by what I've presented, whether positive or negative, change is inevitable. You can choose to leave it or you can choose to suffer it. I think we all agree that St Albert is an outstanding place, a city of excellence and innovation, and we need to be ahead of the curve. Let's strive for high goals in all things, starting right now. Thank you.